The iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max are finally here. So today I want to show you the first things you're going to want to do as soon as you get this new phone and set it up like installing iOS 16 and all the other features. Then after this, we're going to dive into all the new tips and tricks that come with this new phone, like the dynamic island, which is located right here. So let's dive right into this video. The first thing to do with your iPhone 14 Pro. The newest and biggest feature for the iPhone 14 is this addition of the dynamic island, which is located right here. And basically, this is a combination of hardware and software that will bubble up when you receive notifications, phone calls, listen to music, and so much more. I'm going to be diving into tons of details about the Dynamic Island and what it has to offer. So stick around and I'll show you guys all what Dynamic Island is about later on in this video. With the iPhone 14, you'll notice it has a very similar body to previous iPhones like the iPhone 13, for example. We have our notifications control right here on the left side. And if I flip it towards me, this means that my notifications are going to be turned on and you'll hear sound coming out of your eye iPhone, but if I flip it like this, you're going to see this orange tab and that signals that your notifications are turned off and it'll just vibrate instead. And then we have our volume controls right here. This is pretty self-explanatory. You click the upper button to turn up your volume and then you click the lower one to turn down your volume. And on the right hand side, we have our power button. It's pretty large right here. And if you hold that down, that'll either turn off your phone. And if you just click it once, it'll just shut off your screen and it'll go black. And then usually this is where the SIM card tray is, but the iPhone 14 has a new approach with SIM cards. I'll dive into that later. So if we go look at the bottom of the phone, you're going to see this is where the charger goes into right here. The iPhone 14 is also MagSafe compatible like the iPhone 13. So you can actually get a MagSafe charger and place it right on the back of the phone and you can charge your product or iPhone this way. I definitely recommend using it because it's a hassle using wires all the time and it also charges fast, if not faster as a wired charger. So you can use any MagSafe chargers with your iPhone 14, no worries there. And then we're looking at the back of the screen right here. We have the three cameras and the flashlight. The iPhone 14 has improved cameras camera quality and I'll dive into that later but this is basically the body of the iPhone now let's take off this covering and see what the front looks like so now we're going to dive into the setup process for this iPhone 14 and the first thing we're going to want to do is just choose our language which is going to be English for this video we're going to choose United States and then now we have the option for quick start and you can bring your current iPhone or iPad near this iPhone to sign in and set up. If you have an iPhone, I definitely recommend doing this because it takes so much faster than setting up manually. So as you can see, once I bring my old iPhone over, it has this tab that pops up saying set up a new iPhone and we're just going to click continue on my old phone. And now all I have to do is just hold up my new iPhone to the camera of my old iPhone, just like this, bring it over. And now it's getting this ready as we set it up. And after we do this, it's going to say set up on my new iPhone, use your current Apple ID to set it up. And we have this option to click set up for me, which makes it easy. So I'm going to do that right now. And now all we have to do is just finish on my new phone right here. I'll just swipe back in and I just have to enter the other password on my previous iPhone right into my new iPhone 14. So as I previously mentioned, Apple created a new way to go with SIM cards called eSIM. Now, essentially what eSIM does, it allows you to conveniently and securely act cellular service without needing a physical SIM card. So you no longer have to transfer your previous old SIM card into your new iPhone. Your eSIM is stored digitally on your iPhone and it reduces the risk of physical damage loss, which is a great improvement for SIM cards and usage of these on your new phone. So we have two options right here, transfer from another iPhone or set up later in settings. I'm just gonna transfer to another iPhone right now and I'm gonna transfer my number. So I successfully transferred my phone number to my new iPhone 14 using eSIM. And now the next part of the setup process is Face ID. And your iPhone can recognize your face, as you know, with the previous iPhones like the iPhone 13 and 12. So you guys can set this up later. I'm not going to dive too much into this because this is pretty self-explanatory but make sure to definitely set up face id because it's great it makes it so much easier to get into your phone than having to enter a password every single time so let's click set up later right here and now we have the option to transfer our data from iCloud or transfer from my old iPhone, as you can see. So I'm going to choose transfer from my iPhone since I have my old one right next to me. So I'm going to click that. It's going to take about 20 to 25 minutes. And now it's going to set up my Apple ID. It'll take a few moments, but just come back to this video after you have this part set up. So now this tab is going to pop up and it's going to say, make this your new iPhone. And here's all the things that are going to transfer over from my previous iPhone to my iPhone 14, my apps and data, my settings, my Apple wallet, and my Apple watch and all my connections to my iPhone. And after you put in a few minor details like your card information and all those, 
it'll take you to this page where it says emergency SOS. Now this is a brand new feature for Apple products like the new iPhone 14 and the Apple Watch. And essentially what emergency SOS is, is the iPhone's ready to help in any emergency. So you can press and hold for emergency SOS. All you have to do is just press and hold the side button and either volume button to make an emergency call. We have crash detection. So if the phone detects a severe car crash, it will automatically try and call emergency services. And also coming in fall 2022, they have emergency SOS via satellite, which is also very new. And when available in select countries, the iPhone can try to text emergency services to the satellite if it cannot connect to cellular. So if you're in a situation, if you're lost, for example, you can actually contact a satellite and you'll be able to send out messages that way, which I think is super innovative and super helpful in certain scenarios. So definitely set this up and let's click continue right here. And as you can see, it's going to transfer my data from my previous iPhone. It's going to say, keep your other iPhone nearby and connect it to power until the transfer is complete. We have about three minutes to just come back to this video after this part is set up. And just like that, the setup process is complete and we are now ready to use our iPhone 14. And let's dive right into it and go into our iPhone's home screen right here. As you can see, some of my apps are transferring over from my previous iPhone at the moment, but don't worry, those will finish uploading soon enough. But the first thing we're going to want to do to get started is go to settings and make sure we're updated to iOS 16. And if we're not, make sure we update that right away. iOS 16 has just been released, offers tons of new features that are all incredible. It's personally my favorite software update for Apple, and I definitely recommend getting that set up as soon as you can. So as you can see, we just got the software update in our settings section, and we're going to click download and install right here. And throughout this video, I'm going to be showing you tons of features that come with iOS 16, as well as the iPhone 14, but definitely download iOS 16 as fast as you can. So the iPhone 14 has a new Super Retina XDR display. And as you can see, it is completely incredible, has such a nice display and aesthetics to this new screen. But I want to show you a few ways you can customize your display just to get started with your new iPhone 14. And to do that, all you want to do is just go to settings right here. And then as you can see, iOS 16 is about to be updated, but we'll dive into that later. And then if we go down to display and brightness right here, you're going to see tons of options we can start looking at. So first we have our appearance. So you have the option between light and dark. Right now, I have my iPhone on light, but if we want to make it dark, it's just going to essentially turn all the other backgrounds black, like on text message or iMessage and other apps, and just going to make the overall display a little bit darker. So let's click that right now. See, it's going to turn the settings black right here, opposed to white. For the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it light, but that is completely up to you. But we also have this automatic tab right here, and if we turn this on, it's going to give us a few options to go off of. So essentially, by turning this on, you can have scheduled times to change appearance automatically. So if you want light mode on from sunset to sunrise, it'll stay on during these time periods. As soon as the sun sets, your phone's going to transition into dark mode since it's the nighttime, or you can create your own custom schedule right here. I'm going to keep it sunset to sunrise because it aligns with my sleeping schedule, obviously. And then next we have our text size. So you can change the size of your text when texting. I like the standard, but if you want it bigger, you have a hard time seeing, you can always turn that up. Or if you want it smaller, you can definitely do that as well. And you can also bold text. So now if we turn on bold text right here, now all your text messages or texts on your screen are going to turn bold. This is completely up to you. All of these are your preference. I'm going to turn that off. And then you can choose from your brightness right here, or you can go to your control center and swipe up and choose your brightness options this way. But I'm going to dive into the control center later. And then next we have true tone, which I'll also dive into later. But these are a few appearances and ways you can change your display and brightness on your iPhone 14. And then another feature I want to bring your attention to is auto lock. So as you can see, I have mine turned on at never right now, but essentially what this means is this is going to show how long your screen is going to stay on before shutting off or turning black. So attention is detected when you're looking at your screen. And when attention is detected, your phone does not have a dim display. It's bright. So I always have mine on never because I like to have it just continuously going until I shut it off myself. But you can have your auto lock turn from 30 seconds to five minutes anywhere in between. And it's completely up to you. Also, a new feature specifically for the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14. 14 Pro is that the screen's always on display. So instead of your phone screen shutting off, the lock screen will always be glanceable so you can see any updates without having to tap anything at all. It's just going to be darker as you can see right now. But when I pick up my phone like this, you're going to see it starts to get brighter and goes back to that normal display. So this is a brand new feature on the iPhone 14, but also keep in mind that when it's in my pocket or face down, the screen will go black. So you can save battery, which is something I definitely recommend doing, but this is a great feature for the iPhone 14. It's 
always gonna be glanceable unless it's in your pocket or it's facing down. If you're still using old fashioned, slow charging and messy lightning charging cables, it is time for you to say goodbye to those. Your phone has incredible MagSafe technology built right into it, which allows you to wirelessly and magnetically charge your devices. If you're going to invest so much money into an iPhone, then you should be giving yourself a premium experience, which all starts with something that you need to do every day, and that is charging your actual device. Get the absolute most out of your iPhone with Elgear's 2-in-1 Lightning Charging Stand. This stand allows you to magnetically and wirelessly charge both your iPhone and your AirPods simultaneously. Place your phone anywhere on the sleek charging stand and you're going to feel that magnet automatically attach right to your phone. Elgear wanted to make sure that you can use your phone for all of its uses without having to take it off the stand, which is why they included dual coil technology so you can use your phone both vertically and horizontally in landscape mode. This means that you can still send your messages, emails, or anything else, or you can flip your phone sideways and watch your favorite videos and movies while your phone is still being charged in the background. This stand is made with the highest quality materials like metal and tempered glass, and they also put non-slip silicone on the bottom of the stand. Elgear used official MagSafe technology, so you never need to worry about your phone falling off the stand or having to fidget around with your phone to get it in the right position. As I already mentioned, this is a two-in-one lightning charging stand, so you can charge two devices at the same time by using the second wireless charger on the back of this stand. This is perfect for charging a pair of headphones or even a second iPhone. Wait no longer and finally go upgrade your charging experience by going to lgear.com, stop using those old fashioned slow charging and messy lightning cables and upgrade to the two in one lightning charging stand that's perfect for your desk or your nightstand and it's also being sold at an incredibly discounted rate. So go to lgear.com, the link's on the screen and down in the description, enjoy. Now since we have iOS 16 updated on our iPhone 14, I wanna show you a new feature that comes with it regarding the display and the lock screen for this new iPhone. So now with iOS 16 on your iPhone 14, you can actually change and edit your lock screens without having to go into settings. You can do it right through the lock screen, which makes it super convenient and easy. And they have offered tons of new customizations you can do with these lock screens. So let's dive into all of them. So first, if you wanna edit your lock screen that you currently have, all you have to do is just hold down on it like this and you can click customize right here. So now we have tons of options to choose from, like changing the font, the color, and adding certain widgets. So so for example, if I wanna change the color of my text right here, I can just click on that and I can choose the font and color. They have offered tons of fonts, like all of these right here, tons to choose from. And then you can also slide to choose different colors you want for that specific font. You can choose all of these colors right here and say you don't wanna choose any of those colors, you can always just go to this ring right here and choose from a spectrum, grid, or sliders. So say for example, I wanna choose a red slider. I can just always move this up or down depending on my preference. And this is one of the colors you can choose, but there's tons to choose from. You can essentially edit your lock screen in any way with all of these colors. And you can also choose what widgets you want to be shown on your lock screen. Right now you can see I have my calendar, the weather, and my battery percentage for my iPhone. But if we tap right here, you're gonna see all the widgets you can add and remove. So say I wanna remove my weather, for example, and I wanna add my alarm clock instead, I can just click that right here and now my 7:45 a.m alarm is going to pop up right on my lock screen then if you want more options to choose from you can choose any of these that you prefer tons of widgets to choose from and i definitely recommend trying them and personalize it to your needs and you can also choose the color of your lock screen so right now we have deep purple which is the color of the iphone that i got but if we just swipe over you're going to see we have gold silver and space black. And if we click these three dots down here, you have the option to have a depth effect as well. This will just show it in more detail, which I definitely recommend because it has an incredible display. And if we click done right here, you're gonna see this option as well. We have the option to set the wallpaper as a pair. So this will be the color and display of my lock screen and my home screen as well. And say you wanna customize your home screen in a different way, there's no worries there. You can actually choose a different option for your home screen, but I'll dive into that later. Now, if you wanna create a new lock screen or switch between lock screens you also all you have to do is just hold down your lock screen you can see i have tons i've already created but if we want to create a new one you can either click this plus button or swipe right here and click add new so by adding new there's tons of wallpapers to choose from we have anywhere from photo shuffle emoji and the featured i'm going to walk you through some of my favorites right now so one of the coolest options i think is the emoji option so you can actually have emojis as your background of your lock screen if you scroll down to this emoji section right here they're going to give you a few that they recommend 
all of these options, but if you wanna create your own, you just scroll back up to the top like this, click emoji, and now you can choose any emoji that you want and that you like and add that as your lock screen. So for example, this was a combination of emojis I used to create this lock screen right here, and I put it in a blue background, but you can essentially edit your emojis in any way and choose from the options they give you, like this one, for example. Completely up to you, but this is a brand new feature on the wallpapers with iOS 16 that I definitely recommend checking out. And if we go back to create new, I also wanna show you one of my other favorites, which is also the photo shuffle. So with photo shuffle, it's essentially a dynamic set of photos that shuffle as you use your iPhone through the day and you can actually change the shuffle frequency so i have mine set to hourly but you can change this right here by choosing on tap lock hourly or daily so i want to do on tap for example and they give me recommended photos to use so let's click use featured photos right here so now this is the first photo in my photo shuffle and if i want to tap i can see all the other photos that are going to be featured in this photo shuffle as you can see apple chose the best pictures i have taken to have as my background i included nature and cities and then also on top of this, if you want to add any widgets or change the font, you can definitely do that as well. And now every time you use this photo shuffle, every time you tap your screen, it's going to change that lock screen right here. And say you don't want all of these photos that are shown to be featured in this photo shuffle, you can click these three dots right here and you can actually have this photo specifically not featured and you can turn that off. So now this photo won't be featured and you can choose which ones you want to have featured on this lock screen, which I think is super cool. And all these photos are great. So I definitely recommend trying that if you you like taking photos and have some high quality ones you can choose the black and white option duo tone color wash any of these options you can choose from with your lock screen on your iPhone and iOS 16. I wanna show you a few of my options that I've created with this lock screen. So for example, if I swipe right, I actually created a Jon Snow one from Game of Thrones, which I think is super cool for all those Game of Thrones fans out there. I have tons of options I wanna choose from. I have this generic one that they give me. Any iPhone wallpaper you wanna choose, you can essentially add, it's gonna look very nice with a high quality display and great aesthetics on this lock screen for iPhone 14s with iOS 16. You'll also notice on the iPhone 14 and iOS 16, the notifications now appear at the bottom of the screen opposed to covering all the nice displays that you created on the wallpapers. So as you can see, it's located right here. I definitely prefer this way so they're out of my way when I'm looking at my screen, but there's actually a way you can change it to go back to the original way notifications were shown. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. We just got to go to settings right here. And once we're on settings, it's super easy to do. You just want to go to notifications right here. And as you can see, I have an list view right here, but you can choose between stack or count. I prefer keeping it as list the way it is. As I can see, my notifications are at the bottom, which are out of the way. So I definitely prefer this. But if you prefer the old way, you can choose any of these options as well. So for example, we have list right now, but I want to show you what the other ones look like. So if we click list for or count, for example, and we go back to my wallpaper, you're going to see I have a tab that says one notification opposed to actually showing the notification. And if we just tap that right here, then the notification is going to pop up. So it's completely out of your way. I prefer the other way, but this is completely up to you. And you can just edit this right in your notification center on your settings. iPhone 14 also introduces an all day battery life, which is a brand new feature for this new phone and allows up to 23 hours of video playback for the iPhone 14 Pro that I have. And I believe it's 29 hours of video playback for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So this is a great new battery addition for the iPhone. It stays supercharged. And remember, you can always just charge it using this right here or using a magnetic charger with a MagSafe compatibility on the back of your screen. But as you can see right now, we have our battery icon right here. And if I scroll down to my control center, you're going to see it shows the battery percentage. But if you don't want to see that and you want to see the specific number right off the bat, you can actually change this in settings. So if we go to settings to change our battery, it's super easy to do. You just go down to battery right here and it's going to show these options you can choose from. We have battery percentage, which is turned off. But if I turn that on, what I was saying is now you can see the number of that battery percentage right here on this battery icon. It shows 94. I definitely recommend this because in previous iOS updates, they actually show the percentage and they took it away after that. But with iOS 16, you can now have this option to show the battery percentage again. And I like to have that on so I can just see the number so I get an idea of when I need to charge it. Then as I'm sure you guys are all aware, you know of a low power mode, which will turn on and actually help you save battery when your phone's starting to get low and you don't have a charger available to charge your phone at the moment. Since we already talked about all the customization you can do with the lock screen, I wanna show you the customization you can use with the home screen of the iPhone right now. So as you can see, I'm on my home screen right now and I have tons of apps and they're all pretty scattered, but I wanna show you some features like adding widgets for an example. So as I'm sure you all are aware, if you have an iPhone, you can add widgets to your home screen. Right here is actually an example one. It's my stack widget where it shows all my favorite 
widgets that I wanted to add to my iPhone's home screen. But if we hold down the home screen anywhere, you're gonna see we have this option where the apps start jiggling. And then we have this plus button right here. So if we wanna add a widget, we can just click that plus button. And now you have all these widgets you can choose from anywhere from notes, reminders, fitness, news, photos, anything you want essentially on your widgets, you can choose and add those to your lock screen. So for example, if I wanna add a widget for my battery, I can do that right here. It's gonna show the options I can choose from with status, which is a smaller square icon. We have a longer, more rectangular one. And then we also have this big one right here. To keep things simple, I'm just gonna add this widget right here. And now that's on my lock screen or my home screen of my iPhone. So I can see the percentage whenever I'd like to. And also if we hold down our home screen, you're gonna see that the apps start to jiggle and they have these minus buttons pop up. So for example, say you're spending too much time on an app like TikTok, for example. If we click this right here, we have the option to delete the app or remove from home screen. And say you don't want to delete it because you like to spend some time on TikTok, but you don't like to spend all your time and it's time consuming. You can actually remove this from your home screen so you don't see it and you're less inclined to go on it. So now if we remove from our home screen, it's not going to be on my home screen, but I still have that app downloaded. And if I want to find it, I can just search it up with searching and Siri suggestions, or I can go all the the way to my app library, which is all the way over here. And that's where I'm gonna be able to find TikTok or any other app that I hide from my home screen. So this is one way you can hide apps from your home screen if you think you're spending too much time on it. And if you wanna locate that app, you can go to the app library right here. It has every single app on your phone that you've downloaded and you can locate them right here or search them right here on the search tab. And as you can see, I have tons of pages with tons of apps. They're all pretty scattered out on my phone, which I should fix. But I wanna show you an option where you can actually hide certain pages of your app so you don't have to keep scrolling to find those ones. So for example, if we hold down the screen again and click these dots down here, you're gonna see all the pages of apps that I have on my iPhone 14. And as you can see, they all have a check mark under each page. And this essentially means that all these apps are gonna be shown on my home screen when I go on my iPhone. But if you wanna remove some of these pages, you don't want them all shown so you can have to scroll less, you can essentially do that by just unchecking all of these. So for example, if I wanna uncheck this page right here, now that page is not gonna be shown on my home screen of my iPhone. And then also I can do this with any of the other pages that I want, but some of these apps are very scattered out and I don't use them all the time. So you can check or uncheck any pages on your home screen if you want and choose which ones you wanna see when you go on your iPhone. So I definitely recommend doing this if you have tons of apps and you don't wanna have all of these pages opened at once, you can essentially do that and just click done right here. And now that page won't show. Also for the home screen, I'm sure if you have an iPhone, you're aware of this feature. If you wanna clear tabs or apps that are open currently on the home screen of your iPhone, all you have to do is just swipe up on the bottom of your phone like this, and you're gonna see all the apps that are currently open on your iPhone at the moment. And to clear those, all you have to do is just swipe up like this, and now those apps will be closed. And I definitely recommend doing this because this is a way to save battery percentage so you don't have all these apps running at once, draining your battery. I'm really good at remembering to clear all my apps because I like to save my battery, but I know a lot of people can forget to do that, but that's the way you can clear your apps so you can save battery on your iPhone just by swiping up like this, then clearing those apps. I wanna show you all a little bit about the control center and all the icons within that control center. To access your control center, it's super easy to do. You see where the battery icon right here is. All you do is just swipe down right here and now we are in my control center of my iPhone 14. And some of these icons are self-explanatory and others I'm gonna walk you through. So let's dive right into it. So right off the bat, we have airplane mode. You only have to turn that on when you're on an airplane as it's about to take off. We have our cellular turned on. I definitely wanna keep that turned on so you can send out messages, receive phone calls and whatnot. We also have our Wi-Fi right here. So you wanna make sure you're connected to a network and Wi-Fi so you can go on any social media or go on any platforms and get that internet. We also have our Bluetooth. So when you want to connect to headphones or connect to any Bluetooth products, you can actually just turn that on. And by holding down this tab right here, you're going to see all these options that we have in more detail. We have our personal hotspot, airdrop, and airplane mode, all the other ones I talked about. So these are pretty self-explanatory. You wanna make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi and cellular at all time to use your iPhone 14 to the maximum ability you can. And next we have our music tab right here. So I have nothing playing at the moment, but if I was playing music or a podcast or any sort of audio, you'd see that it'd be playing right here. And if we click this little tab right here, you're gonna see that the audio would be coming out of my iPhone because it has a check mark next to it, but I also have speakers and TVs like my MacBook Pro and my Roku. And say I had my AirPods or any headphones connected, you could actually obviously to choose that and connect to those as well. So when you hear that audio, it's coming through those ear pods or earbuds 
at the moment opposed to having my iPhone. So that's one other feature on the control center. We have our orientation lock right here. And essentially what this does is when, since I have this turned on, now whenever I twist my phone, basically the iPhone screen is not gonna turn with it since I have this orientation lock turned on. But if I turned it off and then rotated my phone that way, the screen would actually flip that way as well. I prefer to have my orientation locked in this variation and orientation. And then next we have our brightness right here. And I already talked a little bit about the display. But as you can see, if we hold this down, you're going to have the option to increase your display or brightness or lower it, depending on how bright it is in the area that you're using your iPhone in. And then we also have dark mode. I already showed you guys what this entails, but right now we have dark mode and it's off until sunset. But if I want to turn that on, I can do that through my control center just by clicking this. And now my screen is going to turn into dark mode opposed to light mode. We have night shift right here. And essentially what night shift does is by turning it on, it's going to create a screen that's more dim and yellowish opposed to the bright one I have right here. And this is perfect for before you go to bed. If you're reading any news or going on social media on your phone at night, you don't want to have too much strain or damage to your eyes because we know the screens can be very vibrant and bright. So by turning on night shift, it's actually going to prevent that strain on your eyes and you're going to be able to see a little bit clear. It's essentially like using blue light glasses to read your book or go on your phone. Similar way with night shift. And then also we have true tone. And essentially what true tone is by turning that on, it just creates a more vibrant display on your phone. It's going to show the colors popping with a more vibrant vibrant display and you're going to be able to see all the vibrant colors right here on your home screen. I prefer that off. But as you can see, this is the brightness section on your iPhone's control center. Then also we have our volume. This is pretty self-explanatory. If you hold that down, you just have the option to turn it up or down right here. You also have the volume buttons on the side of your phone. And then also we have our home app, which will appear. I haven't set that up, but I can walk through that later. We also have our flashlight right here. So if I click that, it actually just turns on my flashlight like this, right through this hole right here on the back of my screen. Pretty self-explanatory. And if you hold down the battery icon, you can actually choose how bright you want your flashlight to get. As you can see, I have at the lowest option, but if you want it really bright, you can turn it up all the way. I prefer to keep it right here for battery purposes, but this is a little bit about the flashlight tab right here. And just to turn it off, you just click that. I want to take a quick break from the video to introduce to you guys Rakuten, the best app to get cash back and other great deals. With Rakuten, you're going to be able to shop at stores you love and earn great rewards and other great deals just by using this app. And also with our exclusive link, with Rakuten, you're gonna be able to earn an additional $30 just by using it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to access that link and earn your free $30 right now. Claim your free $30 from Rakuten using this exclusive link. All you wanna do is just go to Safari or any web browser you have and type in bit.ly slash get ebates bonus. That is bit.ly slash get ebates bonus. Now that's in the link in the description as well of this video and it's on the screen right here. So make sure to check those out to find it at the end of this video, but this link is exclusive to AppFind. So you only can get this $30 from using this link. So we made sure to get you guys the best rewards possible through this partnership. And you guys are also supporting our channel by doing this. So I want to thank you guys for that. But let's click on the link right here. It'll be in the description, like I said. And it's gonna take you to this page and it's gonna say, all our invites you to get $30 once you join and spend $30. So all you have to do is just create an account on Rakuten, which is completely free, no charges or costs involved. And once you spend that $30, on Rakuten, you're going to get a free additional $30 on top of that. So it's a win-win because you're going to be able to get free $30 and you're going to be able to get cash back while shopping at your favorite stores. So all you have to do is just put in your email and create a password and then you are good to go with this exclusive link with Rakuten. For using our exclusive link, I want to show you guys the Rakuten app. It is right here. It is super easy to use and navigate. It has up to 3,500 plus stores where you can earn cash back and other great rewards. So odds are that if there's 3,500 plus stores, one of these are going to be your favorite stores to shop at. So you're losing money if you would essentially do not download this app and use our exclusive link to get that extra $30. But as you can see, there's tons of different sections to choose from. Stores are members to love. For example, we've got Macy's and Walmart. At Macy's, you can earn 10% cash back other great deals in the category section so if you have a specific category you want to look into for sports and goods or health and beauty or any of these you can gladly go to do that on this category section but if we click on sports and outdoors for example we're going to see lululemon athleta adidas all these other stores right here where you can earn cash back we're going to click on lululemon it's going to show you the two percent cash back right here and more information it's going to tell you when it expires it's going to show you these top coupons but this is just one of the categories of many Anything you want to shop, essentially Rakuten will have that. So you guys definitely got to download this app. You're losing out on money if you aren't using Rakuten. 
and think, keep in mind that you're also going to get an additional $30. So you're overall saving tons of money by using our exclusive link and using Rakuten in general. And do not miss out on this opportunity, guys. Enjoy. And then next, we have our clock icon right here. And if we click on that, it's just going to take us to the clock app on our iPhone. So if we click that, it's going to take us right here. And now we have a few options I want to walk you through for your clock on your iPhone 14. Right now, we have a timer. So you can set any timer you'd like, whether it's hours, minutes. And as soon as that time runs out, your alarm is going to come off on your iPhone to alert you with that. We have our stopwatch right here. And by clicking that, it's just going to start a timer. And then we also have our alarm. As I previously showed you, I have my alarm set to 7.45 a.m. right here at all times every morning. But you can change that. And I'm going to walk you through more details about the alarm and setting alarms later on in this video. We also have our world clock right here. Since we are on the clock app, I actually want to show you a cool feature that's linked with the dynamic island I mentioned earlier in this video. And I want to show you how this comes into action. For example, when we start a timer right here. So if we want to start a timer for 30 minutes and we click start right here, if we exit the app, you're going to see the dynamic island come into action with this timer. So if I exit out, you're going to see right here on the top of my iPhone with the dynamic island, it's actually going to show me how much time I have left on that timer right here at the top of my screen, which I think is a super cool feature for the iPhone 14. And if we click on it again, it's going to take us to the timer and that clock app. So this is one feature that is really cool with the dynamic island and the clock app on your iPhone 14. You exit out and now you're going to see your timer at all times when you're doing other stuff on your iPhone. And it is super cool and I wanted to show you guys that, but let's go back to the control center now. So next in the control center, we have our calculator and this is gonna take us to the calculator app when we click it, similar to when we click the clock app, it took us to that app. So if we click it right here, it's gonna take us to that app right here, pretty self-explanatory and you need to crunch any numbers, you can just go to that on the control center or go to the calculator app right there. And then next we have the camera, which is something I wanna talk about in a little bit more detail later on in the video. But if we click on the camera app right here, it's gonna take us to the camera of our phone and it's gonna come through right here. These iPhone 14s have incredible cameras. They get better with every new iPhone release. I'm going to be walking through some new features that come with the camera later, but this is one way to access it on the control center of your iPhone 14. Then next we have our battery icon on the control center. By turning this on, you essentially put your phone in low power mode, which I already talked about. And if we hold it down right here, you can see that low power mode is turned on. I don't need to turn that on right now because I'm at 90%. But like I said, when your phone's getting low and you don't have access to charger to save some of your battery life, you can just turn this on and now you're gonna reduce that battery strain on your iPhone. And then next we have our screen recorder right here. And by clicking this, you're gonna actually be able to take a screen recording of anything going on in your iPhone. I'm sure most of you know what this does, but if we click it, it's gonna start taking a video of my home screen through my iPhone 14. So you can definitely turn that on if you need to show any screenshots or any information to any of your colleagues or friends. And then lastly, we have this ear icon. So this has a ton of different features. You can choose them right here by holding it down. And by clicking this, it's gonna show my speaker. And the first option we have is background sound. So essentially by turning on background sound, you can choose which specific background sound you want and you can have that noise coming through your phone. I like to turn on background sounds when I'm doing work and I prefer some sort of background noise. I don't like to work in complete silence. I like to have some sort of white noise. So by turning on background sounds, you guys, you can see we have rain pop up and you can choose from tons of different options like rain, balance noise, bright noise, dark noise, all the other options you can choose from that you prefer. And I definitely recommend turning this on if you like to work and not just silence. You like to have something going on in the background, like some sort of white noise. You can do that with your iPhone 14. I'm gonna shut that off right now though. And we also have Live Listen. So essentially with Live Listen, you can connect a compatible audio device to use Live Listen. And then lastly, we have headphone accommodations and media. So you can choose which one you want your audio to come out of. I have my phone and my media coming through my iPhone. But like I said, if you have AirPods or any other headphones with you, you can actually choose which one you want your audio to come through right here in this control center of your iPhone 14. The last app I wanna talk about actually comes pre-installed on your iPhone 14 as well, and it's pretty self-explanatory, but it is the Tips app right here. So overall, the iPhone 14 offers tons of new features and iOS 16 offers a ton of new features as well. And it's great to go to the Tip app just to get an idea of what you're using and how to use these with these new updates and this new iPhone. Tons of things you can search and look up to get an idea of what you're using and how to use it. So I definitely recommend using the tip app if you're new to iOS 16 or the iPhone 14 so you can walk away from this video and use your iPhone like an absolute expert. I hope you enjoyed today's video. These are the first things you're going to want to do when you get started with your brand new iPhone 14. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like and hit the subscribe button for more great content like this. And I also encourage you guys to go to appfindvip.com and subscribe to our email newsletter to get the best mobile apps and games delivered directly to your email inbox. And also go give us a follow at appfindvip, which is our Instagram account 
where we share the best tips, tricks, and hidden features on all Apple content like the iPhone 14, Apple Watch, and Android products out there. And I also encourage you guys to go to bestrewardsapps.com to see all these incredible apps like Quick Thoughts and Rakuten that allow you to earn incredible rewards and prizes right at your fingertips. These are all affiliates of ours and they're all great apps that are worth checking out. So definitely check out all these links, you guys. They're going to be in the description of this video. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.